Fibial avulsion fracture of the ankle. Avulsion fracture occurs when a portion of the bone is forcibly detached from its point of attachment. Avulsion fractures can occur anywhere in the body and the ankle is the most common place for it to happen. When the ankle is sprained or twisted, a force is passed through the surrounding ligaments and tendons. And when that happens, one of two things can happen. It's either that the ligament or tendon tears resulting in a sprained ankle, or if the ligament or tendon pulls so hard from its bony attachment that a small piece of the bone comes off, which is in this case, the fibula. This is what is called an avulsion fracture. It is impossible for you to know the difference between a sprained ankle and avulsion fracture. That is why you should always do an x-ray following a moderate to severe ankle injury. So this is an example of the avulsion fracture to the ankle. As you can see here, a small portion of the lateral malleolus of the fibula has been chipped off from the epiphys. The muscles and bones affected by the injury. The first bone is the fibula, where the lateral malleolus or the medial malleolus will detach from the diaphys of the bone. The calcaneofibular ligament and the anterior inferior tibia fibula ligament usually aid in pulling of the bone knee attachment. So this is the calcaneofibular ligament. It is linked from the calcaneal to the fibula and this is usually stronger than this ligament which is linked from the tibia to the fibula ligament and this is what usually tears off while this pulls this part of the fibula off from the diaphys of the fibula. As you can see here, the anterior tibia fibula ligament is torn and the calcaneal fibula ligament is pulling the bony attachment away. This is the most common type of avulsion fracture of the ankle. Of course, you, there, it, vice versa could happen as well. What are the causes of the injury? Well, the majority of people who acquire this type of injury are in fact athletes, especially football, basketball and soccer players. They are more prone to suffer from this condition because their sport requires the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion of the feet. Car accident victims and people who fall from a height are likely victims of this type of fracture as well due to the blunt force that occurs to the ankle. But don't worry, as in most cases of avulsion fractures, surgical intervention is often not needed. However, for more severe cases, you do require some degree of metal work to reattach the fibial malleolus. Following surgery or no surgery, casting is placed for a period at least 8 to 12 weeks in order for the bone and surrounding ligaments to heal. Possible complications include soft tissue injury to the ankle, infection following open wound or surgery, deep vein thrombosis causing blood clots, poor wound healing usually seen in diabetic and alcoholics, metalwork failure which is related to infection, osteoarthritis and underlying condition, tarsal tunnel syndrome which will constrict the nerve causing persistent pain, growth deformity which occurs in children, and muscle atrophy and cartilage degeneration due to the immobilization of the ankle. Recommended rehabilitation exercises. The recovery phase is categorized into three categories. The first phase is the acute phase, which can begin two weeks post-op. And this con consists of passive exercises, which does not involve muscle contraction. The second one is the recovery phase, which spans from six to 12 weeks. And this um, this involves isometric and isotonic exercises along with active ankle movements and from week 12 onwards you can continue to the functional phase where you will in be involved in strengthening muscles, increasing neuromuscular control and full bearing weight exercises in order for you to continue your training. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening.